Rick Santorum filled in for a conservative radio host in Iowa, probably because he wants to run for president again, and Iowa is the first stop. And he heaped praise on some of the worst people in American politics. Jerry was a warrior with the moral majority, you may recall. Uh, Jerry uh, would come to the Congress every now and then and uh, had a uh, had a larger-than-life presence uh, when, when he was in the room. There was just nobody who had a broader smile, no one who had a more welcoming uh, affect than, uh, uh, than Jerry Falwell. And it's interesting because if uh, those of you who remember him and remember how the press treated uh, you know, Reverend Falwell was not necessarily uh, positive. Always, you know, it's interesting that you know when you when you get to to uh, to be in the United States Senate, you get a chance to meet a lot of people that uh, you read about and that you uh, you never you never thought you'd ever meet. And uh, Jerry Falwell is one of those people. And when I met him, um, it was uh, wow. He's he's nothing like what I what I expected. What a completely gracious, warm. Uh, you know, affirming kind of and he was like that to everybody not just me because i was a senator but he was like that to everybody uh in the room he was he was quite a great presence i share one other story is that uh, probably the uh the, the starkest uh contrast uh of what the press used to portray and what the reality was uh on that front was uh, jesse helms uh you may recall the senator from north carolina who was uh, seen as one of the toughest, uh, meanest, nastiest guys in town. Uh, and there was no one nicer than Jesse Helms. I mean, I don't think a single Democrat would tell you that on a personal level there was anybody that was more gentlemanly, more uh, more kind than uh, than Jesse. He stood up for what he believed in, but uh, he was always a gentleman about it. That's really one of the things that uh, tends to be missing uh, in the political world today, which is uh, stand up for your principles, uh, but be a decent human being while doing it. Decent human being is the last term I would use to describe Jerry Falwell and Jesse Helms. He just came in his pants over these guys. Let me tell you about them so you understand exactly who they are. Helms opposed the Civil Rights Act. By the way, we could end the conversation right now. I could just drop the mic like a rapper after having nailed it and leave. Conversation over. Jesse Helms is an absolute idiot and an immoral prick. Who who could be against the Civil Rights Act? And I do not buy the argument before anybody tries to make it. Oh, you have to look at things through the context of the time that they were in, and at the time, it was totally acceptable to be an old, white, blithering, open, racist fuckhead. Eh, not buying it, that's a ridiculous argument. So, he opposed the Civil Rights Act and the Voting Rights Act, of course. He called the Civil Rights Act, quote, the single most dangerous piece of legislation ever introduced in the Congress. Whoa. He also called gay people, quote, weak, morally sick wretches. Seems like a decent guy, but because he was kind to Rick Santorum, another awkward white guy in a sweater vest, therefore he's gotta, he's gotta be a good person, he was good to me. Uh, really? Is that how it works? You know, it, it, Hitler loved his dog. Does that mean he was a good guy? I'm sure he was close with, with Himmler. <laughs> You know, Himmler's like, well, he was good to me. I don't understand. Why don't people like him? I don't know. Maybe the fucking gas chambers and the Holocaust and the list goes on and on. What a stupid argument. He was good to me, so he must be a good person. God damn, that's dumb. Now, uh, there's another famous story about Jesse Helms. He got in an elevator, uh, and a black Democratic congresswoman was in the elevator, and it, she was the only uh, black woman in Congress at the time. And... It's just them in the elevator. When the door shuts, he starts singing, I wish I was in the land of cotton. Seems like a really great guy, I must say. Now let's go to Jerry Falwell. He found the Vietnam War problematic. Oh, okay, so I guess he's a good guy in this sense. Because he felt it was being fought with limited political objectives when it should have been, quote, an all-out war against the North. Falwell said the following, quote, 
the president, as a minister of God, has the right to use arms to bring wrath upon those who would do evil. So understand, Jerry Falwell thought we didn't kill enough in Vietnam, and he thought we should have stayed there longer. He wanted to escalate the war. That was his critique of Vietnam. The only person in the country who has that critique. You know, we should really be more involved and kill more people. Yeah, you really sound like a Christian, buddy. You really follow in Jesus' footsteps. Jesus would have totally been in favor of fighting people in Vietnam. Uh, Falwell was also against the sanctions on apartheid South Africa. <laughs> Some of these things are so stupid that they just... They... It, demonstrate the low IQ and the intellectual primitive nature of the people that we're talking about here, how they're, they were unable to think of how history will view them and what they're really advocating for. He was in favor of apartheid South Africa. Who could have been in favor of apartheid South Africa? About MLK, he said the following, quote, I do question the sincerity and nonviolent intentions of some civil rights leaders, such as Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., Mr. James Farmer, and others who are known to have left-wing associations questioning MLK and his commitment to nonviolence. How did that go? He was only <laughs> more wrong about that than anybody has ever been about anything. And about 9-11, he said this, quote, I really believe that the pagans, the abortionists, and the feminists, and the gays and the lesbians who are actively trying to make that an alternative lifestyle, the ACLU, the People for the American Way, all of them who have tried to secularize America, I point the finger in their face and say, you helped this happen. So blaming everybody except the people who did 9-11 for 9-11, stay classy. Anybody who disagrees with you obviously uh, was in on it with 9-11. Again, a ver very bright guy we're dealing with here. And on segregation, uh, he said this, quote, if Chief Justice Warren and his associates had known God's word and had desired to do the Lord's will, I am quite confident that the 1954 decision, talking about Brown versus Board of Education, would never have been made. The facility should separate. When God has drawn a line of distinction, we should not attempt to cross that line. In other words, he openly argued for segregation. This is the guy that Rick Santorum says, or I should say him and Jesse Helms, they are the guys that Rick Santorum says, oh, they're my heroes, and they're decent human beings because they were nice to me, another awkward white guy.